Hey, I'm Dr. Kenyut White. I'm going to be talking to you about um, psychology of deception. You know, you are listening to Kenyut's exploration. You're watching Kenyut's exploration. And I, I just want to explore the psychology of, of uh, deception. You know, <laughs> we lie sometimes, right? Yeah, it's called, it's a part of deception. Line is different, right? Line is basically... Um, it comes under the umbrella of deception, as you'll find out as I go through 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 this um presentation. But what is deception? Deception, according to psychology today, deception refers to the app. <laughs> you know, it's really an app, really big or small, cruel or kind, of encouraging others to believe information that is not true. So that is basically deception, right? And 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 basically, you can deceive somebody by writing something to them, by telling them, by speaking to them, um, be it formally or colloquially, or you know. But but that that's basically deception. You can deceive somebody by by presenting a, a sort of a, a front that that is not so. You might not say it to them, but even by what you have done. Um, omission or commission, but it's really a, a matter of um, wanting them to believe uh, something that is not so. So that's basically the whole thing about deception. But if you look at lying, what is lying? You know, lying is, is, is as I said, command of deception. And lying is a common form of deception, stating something known to be untrue with the intent to deceive an individual. So deception is more than lying, really, as you can deceive someone without lying, as I have alluded to before. Lying is basically stating, telling. But do lies have a functional purpose in our lives, in your life? Yeah, researchers think so. Um, in some situation, telling lies, um, you know, Telling the whole truth may set your box or telling lie may be an advantage according to research. As you think about that, I'm not going to say anything more about that. But look back in your own life and, and see if um, your telling the truth could have set you back. And, um, you know, I'm not encouraging lies, but many people, uh, if they tell the truth, they would have been held back. A study led by Dr. Bella um, DiPaolo found that people lie on average of twice per day. So we lie a lot. I mean, <laughs> I said we, right? <laughs> yeah, that was the slip of the tongue. Um, over the course of a week, the average person tells a lie to roughly one out of every three persons they talk to one on one. Tell me that you are not in that. No, I'm a Christian. I'm the, Well, I don't know, but have you ever told a lie? Think about it. <laughs> According to Dr. Kenyut White, yours truly, um, in my book called Weird People Started on Amazon, why do we lie? Three types of lie um, I, I posited in, in that book. You can get it on Amazon, Weird People Started, right? Um, and escapist lie. Escapist lie is basically to escape something. So we tell a lie to get out of a punishment, uh, you know, to escape something that is not desirable for us. And we also tell prank lies, joke. So tell me, no, you have never told a lie. <laughs> All right, let's go there. But prank lies. Prank lies are really jokes. It's not true, but we want persons to laugh. we making them believe, as we say, lie. It's before making them believe the information that is not so, right? Um, uh, you know, and, and instrumental lies. We lie to get something, <laughs> and in my book, you will. I've interviewed a number of persons who, who 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 said that they have told lies, and one of the persons said that he told a female who he wants to have a relationship with. That is father who on um several gas stations. His father is a wealthy businessman, just to be able to have a relationship with that with that um um lady. So so therefore, that is the instrumental lie, right? But. To continue the way, do we lie? And um, why do we lie? Lying, according to scholars, 
line allows um, individuals to sort of create a, a perceived control over a situation by manipulating it. So according to, to, the, to the scholars, when we lie, we basically want to manipulate a particular situation in order to ensure that we we win. Okay. And in 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 some cases, and well, in, in all cases, um scientists, researchers suggested that lying is a defense mechanism. The Friday run term, you know, we, we had gone through that before in some of the other lectures, some of the other presentations that I've done. But it lying is seen as a defense mechanism. Um, that seemingly prevents us from being vulnerable. Um, that is to not hoping or reveal the true self um, to another person. So we we tend to to keep it uh, on the cover, so to speak. Um, so it's really a defense mechanism to prevent um, any form of um, to cushion any form of discomfort that we may have if if the truth is revealed. Lie detection. How do we detect lies? When it comes to detecting lie, people often focus on body language, yeah? Tells or a subtle physical and behavioral signs that reveal deception, right? For example, lack of expression, a bored posture, and grooming behaviors <laughs> such as playing with the hair or finger, um, pressing fingers or, or lips and, and so on. So, so people sometimes look for those sort of physical um, illustration in order to, to determine whether an individual is lying. Fine. However, um, a number of scholars um, have done research and suggested that we, we can also detect lies through other means, uh, a change in speech pattern. Yeah, one terrible sign someone may not um, be telling the whole truth is irregular speech. Also, the use of non-concurrent um, gestures, and these are gestures, uh, movements in the body that, you know, don't match the words a person um, is saying. Uh, you know, uh, basically, the gestures are the truth teller, <laughs> and, and basically, when you see a gesture doesn't match, then you you realize that that those gestures that have been, um, you know, illustrated are really the truth teller. And, and you know, and and it doesn't match what the person is saying. So, not saying enough is also an indication that the person may be lying. Or saying too much, talking too much, or talking not giving much detail, right? And also, an unusual rise or fall in vocal tone. You know, down up and yeah. Don't <laughs> that's also an indication of that the person is lying, according to scholars. And um, you know, another time, we, well, in in future slides down the line, you'll see where I talk about the direction of eyes and eye movement. Some persons believe that eye movements um basically indicate lying, but science have also proven that those persons who lie will look straight in your eyes as well. So don't don't be fooled by that. <laughs> don't let lie lies to you <laughs> that's something i've been saying right um covering their mouth or eyes also an indication of lies and excessive fidgeting um is also um an indication that the first individual may be lying lie detectors that machine they're called polygraphs <laughs> polygraph measures physiological arousal factors including heart rate blood pressure respiration perspiration and the skin conductivity but so my i have a challenge with that because i am thinking that um other factors can can determine can can affect the the results of a lie detector because persons can have cardiac um, um challenges um blood pressure um, challenges a lot of medical conditions can 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 really affect the, the, the outcome of the lie detector, the results of the lie detector. And that's a limitation in, in the methodology of using lie detector. But the theory of the lie detector test, what is that? It's basically the physiological um, responses, is that res physiological responses will be different when the subject, when the individual, when you and I hear maybe telling a lie versus um, if the person is, is truthful. And, and that's the, the theory of the lie detector. Really.
can you beat the lie detector? <laughs> Many people might ask that because, you know, lie detectors are used in private sectors organization as well for employment um, 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 processing. And, and it's, it's also used in, in, in um, criminal investigation and so on. So it is not only about crime, it's also about employment and and you know and, and and many many aspects, many arena in life um use lie detector tests. But can you beat it? Scientists are saying yes. Researchers believe people can beat a lie detector test because it doesn't really detect lies, it detects a person's physical response in the moment. What that is saying. Anything can change, and it's based on your physical response. And 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 therefore, an individual can easily fail the lie detector test testing. Why? As polygraph lie detector um, testing results depend on physiological reactions and psychological behaviors. It is not the most accurate. Yeah, lie detector is not the most accurate. As suggested in my own critique, other factors may affect the accuracy of a um, lie detector. Science show that liars do not avoid eye contact any more frequently than those telling the truth. Yeah, scientists said that the key thing to look for in eye movement as it relates to detection of lie is deviation from their baseline, what that means. Deviation from the, the baseline basically means misalignment of the eyes, and that is called um, stropping moss or quinting. Yeah? Um, misalignment means that the eyes are not lined up to look at the same thing, right? Um, stropping moss, stropping moss is, is, is basically. Um, you know, misalignment of the eye, one eye is fixed on what the, the person intends to look at, um, that the, fix, the fixing eye, they call it, and the other eye is looking at something else, the deviated eye. So look for those sort of, of things that it relates to eye movement and, and lie detection. Um, the, the eyes dilate as well. So as it relates to the eyes telling the truth, right? I heard, you heard the eye. Um, being an indicator of whether a person is lying. Look for the, 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 the dilation of the eye, eyes. So the eyes dilate. Studies have shown that liars' eyes often dilate when telling a lie. What that means, the black center of the eyes become larger than normal, and, and that is an indication of lying. <laughs> yes. So we have just looked at the psychology of deception on can you exploration? You're a topic in a podcast. You know, we do all sorts of things. We talk to individual, we interview individual from all around the world. I, I do presentation just to give you a little knowledge, right? Um, you know, so that you can learn a bit. And 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 you know, that that's what I do on, on, on my podcast. Um, can you exploration? You never know what will come next. Stay tuned and look at some of our shots on YouTube now. And yeah, there's a knowledge break on Apple Podcasts. Um, check that out as well. Um, Dr. Kenyut White, goodbye.